Oh, hello, great readers. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read all of your part of Ulysses. Ass. Ah. Oh. Ulysses. James Joyce. Shabba. One sick one. Stately. Plump of Mulligan came from the stir hedge. Wearing a ball of lather on which a mirror and a razor lay crossed. A yellow dressing gown. A nerdled. Was sustained gently behind him on the mild morning air. He held the ball aloft and entombed. In Troy Bow at Alturity. Halted. He peered down the dark winding stairs and called out coarsely. Come what? Kinch. Come up. You fearful Jesuit. Suddenly he came forward and mounted the round gun wrist. He faced about and blessed gravely thrice the tower. The surrounding land and the awaking mountains. And catching sight of Stephen Didalus. He bent towards him and made rapid crosses in there. Gurgling in his throat and shaking his head. Stephen Didalus. Displeased and sleepy. Gurgling face that blessed him. Equine in its length. And at the light on tinsel hair. Crane and hued like pale oak. Buck Mulligan peeped an instant under the mirror and then covered the ball smartly. Back to barracks. He said sternly. He added in a preacher's tone. For this. How duly beloved. Is the genuine Christine. Body and soul and brilliance. Slow music. Please. Shut your eyes. Gents. One moment. A little trouble about those white corpuscles. Silence. I'll. He peered sideways up and gave a long slow whistle of call. Then paused a while in rapt attention. His even white teeth glistening here and there with gold points. Chrysostomos. Two strong show whistles answered through the calm. Anx. Old chap. He cried briskly. That will do nicely. Switch off the current. Will you? He skipped off the gun wrist and looked gravely at his watcher. Feathering about his legs the loose folds of his gown. The plump shadowed face and Silanova jaw were called a prelate. Patron of art in the Middle Ages. A pleasant smile broke quietly over his lips. The mockery of it. He said gaily. Your absurd name. An ancient Greek. He pointed his finger in friendly jest and went over to the parapet. Laughing to himself. Stephen Didalus stepped up. Followed him really halfway and sat down on the edge of the gun wrist. Watching him still as he propped his mirror on the parapet. Dipped the brush in the bowl and lathered cheeks and neck. Buck Mulligan's gay voice went on. My name is absurd too. Malachi Mulligan. Two dectors. But it has a Hellenic ring. Hasn't it? Tripping and sunny like the book himself. We must go to Athens. Will you come if I can get there and to fuck out twenty quid? He laid the brush aside and... Laughing with delight. Cried. Will you come? The judge in Jesuit. Facing. He began to shave with care. Tommy. Mulligan. Stephen said quietly. 
S. My love. How long is Haynes going to stay in this tower? Buck Mulligan shove a shaven cheek over his right shoulder. Add up. Isn't he dreadful? He said frankly. A ponderous Saxon. He thinks you're not a gentleman. Add up. These bloody English. Bursting with money and indigestion. Because he comes from Oxford. You know. Diddless. You have the real Oxford manner. He can't make you out. Oh. My name for you is the best. Hincha. The knife blade. He shaved really over his chin. He was raving all night about a black panther. Stephen said. Where is his gun case? Awful lunatic. Mulligan said. Were you in a funk? I was. Stephen said with energy and going fear. Himself about shooting a black panther. You saved men from drowning. I'm not a hero. However, if he stays on here, I am off. Buck Mulligan frowned at the lather on his razor blade. He hopped down from his perch and began to search his trouser pockets hastily. Scudder. He cried thickly. He came over to the gun wrist end. Thrusting a hand into Stephen's upper pocket. Then to. Then just a loan of your nose rig to wipe my razor. Dirty crumpled handkerchief. Buck Mulligan wiped the razor blade neatly. And, hazing over the handkerchief, he said, The Bart's nose are work. I know our clear for our Irish poets. Snug Queen, you can almost taste it. Can you? He mounted to the parapet again and gazed out over Dublin Bay. His ferric pill hissed stirring slightly. Bod. He said quietly. Isn't the sea what algae calls it? A great sweet mother. The snap green sea. The scratch and tightening sea. A bio and opal pundin. Ah. Diddless. The Greeks. I must teach you. You must read them in the original. Fata. Fata. She is our great sweet mother. Come and look. Stephen stood up and went over to the parapet. Harbour mouth of Kingston. Our mighty mother. Buck Mulligan said. He turned abruptly his grey searching eyes from the sea to Stephen's face. The aunt thinks you killed your mother. He said. That's why she won't let me have anything to do with you. Someone killed her. Stephen said gloomily. You could have nailed Sam. Sam it. Hincha. When your dying mother asked you. Buck Mulligan said. I'm Hyperborean as much as you. I pray for her. And you refused. There is something sinister in you. He broke off and leathered again lightly his father's cheek. A tolerant smile called his lips. But a lovely mummer. He murmured to himself. Hincha. The loveliest mummer of them all. He shaved evenly and with care. In silence. Seriously. Stephen. An elbow rested on the jagged granite. Black coat sleeve. Pain. That was not yet the pain of love. Fretted his heart. 
silently. In a dream she had come to him after her death. To be continued.